Welcome to Nico Props. I'm Chris Fry, also known as Nicodemus. So, um, yeah, been working on the Ed 209 project um, and uh, casting the dome eventually. I, uh, I managed to find some time between work and um, other projects to, to get to that. So what I've done is I've, um, I'm going to talk you through exactly what I've done, but effectively, you know, I'll put a layer of uh, a fiberglass on um, and then covered it in this material, which uh, I got from uh, a fabric shop in, in Brighton, actually. I know it's pink, but the color doesn't matter because I'm using, using a black resin as you can see by the, the marks and things on it. This is an off cut from when I actually cast the dome. So um, let's go and talk about, uh, talk through the process of, um, of uh, casting and demolding the, uh, the dome. So, uh, I'm just putting on the, uh, the resin coat here, giving it a coating quickly of the resin. This is an older batch of resin, so it's quite thick actually. And then get some of that, um, matting on there in quite large pieces uh, I don't need to worry too much I'm gonna feather those edges in as well which is uh, is gonna help uh, that whole lot bond together and then uh, just uh, covering some more up basically just giving it a coating so that it's got something to stick to um, and then saturating that mat in the resin so this resin is just a um, a polyester resin, laminating resin that I've given a, a black pigment to. And uh, while I was working with this, I kind of realised that uh, this resin was not working out so well. So I went for a, uh, a slightly thinner resin later on, so that um, I could uh, I could work with it better and it would saturate the mat a little bit better. So it's just a case of completely coating the whole thing with uh, with a coating of resin and then wetting out this mat and uh, and working my way around it. Once I've got the mat soaked uh, or, or covered in resin, I move to another area and then I'll come back to those seams once the bonding inside the actual resin itself has broken down a bit and uh, is actually uh, see I'm yeah so I'm blending it together so that it's going to break down and that allows me to blend it in a bit on those seams, basically. Just makes it a little bit easier, and it's just a case of going around the whole thing and uh, stippling in the uh, the resin just to make sure that uh, it permeates through the material. Also, this stippling technique uh, will allow me to suck up in the brush any extra resin. At the moment, you can see it's very shiny and there's not a lot of, uh, of texture. I can take off that extra resin using the brush. one of these things with uh, laminating resins it does take a while to, to do and it really stinks and with this matting I'm also making sure I um, I come down over the edges um, so it's, it overlaps along the bottom and that resin is going to soak down and give me kind of a lip around the edge which I kind of want I'm going to need that for demolding later on basically you can see it's just flapping around at the bottom while I'm putting this resin on, it's dripping all over the floor, which is fine. So once it's set up, I go around, run my hand over, and sand off any pointy bits because this is going to create air bubbles on the next layer, basically. And on those, um, on the edges, on the on the contours, it's going to cause a problem. So that's the um, the material that I got from Fabric Land in Brighton. It's a pink uh, woolen type material, natural. Um, has to be a natural fiber um, if you use something like um, a nylon or something it could melt I didn't want to run a risk so I bought something for um, for the texture so I'm going around and just getting any of the little threads and things that are poking out I don't want those in there <clears throat> and I'm going to be using this uh, this is a, I think I'm using there as a batch of older resin actually um, that I decided actually this is I think it was this point I thought mm, it's not soaking in very well I'm gonna ditch this and go for a, a different resin uh, go for a thinner resin a newer resin so it soaks in better and it's surprising how much resin that this uh, this blanket actually sucked up I had a 
a five kilo bottle and pretty much used all of it on this one layer. This, uh, this material really did suck it up. And I'm just kind of working my way around, stippling it in and making sure it's all in there. So some of these, uh, you'll notice on the corners and things, there's uh, creases in the material. And uh, what, I, what I ended up doing there is pulling the material so it was flat against the main thing and then clipping it so that, that crease was past the point where I'm going to cut so it's not going to be a problem or well, hopefully it won't be a problem and uh, it's just uh, again same with the mat is to work work in the, the resin and obviously I've put this this sheet on in, in one whole piece I didn't want to have any seams I wanted the texture to be consistent and we can see that uh, the texture is really showing through that fabric really well I'm just kind of dumping out what remaining resin I've got working it into the material and up and down the material so it'll soak down through once it's all cured of course I can go around and uh, trim off the excess with a pair of um, <clears throat> Taylor scissors these are the scissors I usually use for fiberglassing so I'm not too worried about the the resin and things causing a problem with the blades or whatever they're quite cheap scissors I'm just going to throw them away when they're dead and buy a new set not a problem get rid of all that excess and this is uh, hanging down probably about two or three inches below the level of the um, the dome plug so uh, I've got a fair amount of space there underneath so, I'm going to use this plastic coat, this is an orange plastic coat, just, uh, it just happened to be a spray that I had kicking around. <clears throat> I'm going to lay down on the floor and uh, I'm going to spray around the whole under underside edge, that bit that's hanging over. And the reason that I'm doing that is when that's dried, I'm going to know then what piece I need to cut off um, so that uh, this will actually fit the body mould because this uh, the original plug was made to fit the body mold so when I've cut all that orange off it should fit near enough perfectly into the body so all I'm doing here is going around the edge pulling out the edge to get a bit of air underneath and uh, eventually I'm going to stick some wedges in there give it a good pull try and lift that uh, mold out I was hoping that it would uh, just lift but during the actual um, casting stage when I was using that older resin it peeled back some of the um, so these are the plastic wedges yeah it peeled back some of the um, the the PVA that was stuck on there and uh, it caused some cracks and things so this uh, the what I do with the wedges is I put them in and I try and push them in by hand and then I might need to give them a little bit of a tap with the hammer um, I mean not too hard and I'm just working around pushing all those wedges in. Actually during the time that I was putting these wedges in um, I actually ended up using wooden wedges that I made to supplement these as well um, and due to the the locking issue I had because of that PVA um, peeling away I actually ended up cracking the mould on the back edge where my hand is now and on the left hand side as well uh, I cracked it but uh, we've repaired that now and that was uh, with the help of Stuart Jeffrey. So yeah, just uh, push all the mould. Basically what we're trying to do is separate it out. So that was uh, casting the dome and demoulding. Now there were issues with the demoulding process. I didn't have enough wedges and while I was casting um, the, the resin, the first batch of resin I was using was old resin. Uh, it was quite gloopy and it peeled up some of the um, the, the PVA mold release. So what actually happened was the part stuck to the dome plug. So as I was trying to get it off, it was just obviously permanently stuck. So I'm having to put wedges in there to try and pull the dome off. In the process, I cracked the dome uh, quite severely actually in two places. Um, I've since repaired that with the help of my friend um, Stuart Jeffrey, um, a uh, up-and-coming Mandalorian merc, although he says that he's uh, he, he's not in yet because he hasn't got his costume, but he's a Mandalorian merc to me. So, 
Um, so thanks very much to him for his help, um, and hopefully he learned a little bit about fiberglassing in the process, which is which is fantastic. And I encourage anybody that would like to learn anything that's in um, maybe the East Sussex area, if they want to, they're more than welcome to come down while I'm doing things and help me out uh, and learn some bits in the process. Um, so that is. Um, the uh, the dome molding process um, and uh, I'm going to have some more videos uh, along the bottom here and if you want to subscribe you can click on the link up here um, thank you very much for uh, for following the project and I'll see you soon